Today we're going to disprove a myth about solar power systems where people think that if you have two separate solar charge controllers attached to one battery, that when one boosts the voltage, it will reduce the output of the other charge controller, and that is not true. So we're going to talk about the charge rate of batteries and how that's deter determined with a real world test. So I have two MPPTs and a shore power charger. And I'm going to connect and disconnect them, and you will see the output in real time, and it will not change. It's the charge rate of a battery is determined by the internal resistance, and that's determined by the battery bank size, the chemistry, in some instances the cell design, and other factors like temperature. But it is not dependent on how many charge controllers you have attached to a battery. You could have 10 or even 20 charge controllers attached to a battery, and if the battery can handle it, all of the charge controllers will feed as much power as they can. So yeah, let's do a real world test to show you this in action. And for the first test, we have a lithium iron phosphate battery with low internal resistance because it's at a low state of charge. And we're gonna connect two solar panels. And so on top we have 16 watts and on bottom we have 16 watts. There's no fighting going on. And to test this, we're going to disconnect one panel and these are connected to one battery. And guess what, we have 16 watts. Now we're gonna reattach it and see if it changes at all. And it will take another minute for it to track the PowerPoint and then we'll have a watt readout. Now that they're both connected, we have 16 watts up here and 15.9 down here. And so these are not fighting each other. They are pushing as much as they can for the internal resistance of this battery. Now we're gonna add a shore power charging source and see how it changes. And so up here we have our shore power charger. So I just turned the shore power charger on and it's pushing four amps. And guess what, we have 16.1 watts, 16.1 watts. And as this increases, these do not change because this is at a low state of charge and the internal resistance is low and it can accept that charge rate. And now we're up to six amps. And guess what, 16.1 watts, 16.1 watts. There is no change in the output, even though this one is charging faster than these. So this test so far has been with this lithium iron phosphate battery at low state of charge. Now we're gonna use a sealed lead acid and see how it changes. And right now we have 15 watts and five watts because this is at a high state of charge. So one of the chargers is at a different stage of charging as compared to the other one, this one's in bulk. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the resistance of this battery system by adding a load. And so we're gonna add these lights and see how it changes. These MPPTs will see, oh, we have less resistance. And watch this, 20 watts and 22 watts just by connecting this light. And then when I disconnect this light, watch, the resistance will go up and this will drop. Now it's 17 watts, eight watts, 14, 15 watts. Because this is a lower path of resistance, these charge controllers can push more power. But when it's disconnected and this is at a high state of charge, has nowhere to put that power. So the charge rate is dependent on the resistance of the battery and then when the battery is at a high state of charge or a lead acid chemistry, these cannot push as much power. And so now what we're gonna do is attach the shore power charger and see how it changes it. And so get this, this is an eight amp shore power charger, but it's only producing 1.7 amps. And the MPPTs have dropped to zero watts and zero watts. So it's not that they're competing with each other, it's just that these have hit float voltage first. The charge profile for the shore power charger is different than the MPPTs. I have the max voltage limit on these at 14.5, and for this one it can go to 14.8 or 14.9. So that's why this one's still pushing power. They are not fighting with each other, it's just that they have different charge algorithms. And so what we're gonna do now is lower the resistance of this battery system by adding a load. And we're gonna add an inverter and we'll see how these numbers change. And so now I connected an inverter and a light, and you will see that the amps are jumping up on the shore power. Instead of one amp, it's all the way up to three amps, and it will continue to rise. And if you look at the chargers, we have 20 watts up here and 17 watts coming in through here. So once these MPPTs see lower resistance, they will compensate and power that load. 
And a good way to wrap your mind around this is think of the battery as a load. Think about the resistance of this load needs to be determined by the charge controller and the charge controller will feel the voltage and see the voltage increase and it will say how much can I push into this battery. If it's a really tiny battery, the solar charge controllers won't be able to push much at all. The resistance will increase, or if it's at a high state of charge, the resistance will increase a lot and it will reduce its output. But if all of these solar charge controllers see the battery is empty and the battery is large enough to absorb all that power, these will push as much power as they can. And some people at home, they might see one charge controller hitting float voltage before another one and they think, oh, it's because this one's jacking up the voltage. That's not true. You need to think about how these are sensing the voltage of the battery. You have voltage drop across these wires that feed into the charge controller from the battery. So depending on the voltage drop, which is determined by the resistance of the wire and the wire type, will determine what this sees. And you know what's interesting is right now we've got 12.8 volts and 12.9 volts. I try to make this system perfect, but it's off by 0.1 volts. But even that will not change the output. But what it will change is one might hit float voltage a couple minutes first before the other one. But what I want you guys to understand is that the charge rate or how much power these charge controllers can push into a battery is determined by resistance or the internal resistance of the battery or the resistance of all the loads attached to the battery. Also, you can change the resistance of a battery depending, of course, on its chemistry and its size, but temperature can change this a lot. If it's really, really cold, the internal resistance will go up. It will be harder to charge and harder to discharge. That's why it's hard to start your car on cold mornings because the cold cranking amperage has been reduced and also the capacity has been reduced. If the battery is instead warmer, you'll have lower resistance and better performance, but it will degrade faster. And so a hot battery will have a lower charge cycle life, but a cold battery will have a larger charge cycle life. So you're messing with the laws of thermodynamics here. You don't really win. You either get one or you get the other, better performance or longer life. Typically in solar power, you don't really have to think about this stuff though, because the batteries are so large that the charging rate is very very low. Um, usually you won't run into any problems. So having multiple charge controllers or multiple shore power charging sources attached to one battery, there is no problem at all. If you have a really, really tiny battery and for the specified application or at a higher temperature or colder temperature, you might want to change what you're doing and design it around those constraining factors. But for solar power, you don't have to worry about it. Just throw as many charge controllers as you can. And there's quite a few benefits to this. Let's say one of your solar arrays is getting a lot of morning sunshine and another solar array is getting a lot of afternoon sunshine. If you were to parallel connect these two solar arrays, one will drop the other one depending on the sun's position in the sky. So the better thing to do here is to have two separate solar charge controllers so that they can modulate their voltage to the resistance of the solar panel and push as much power and track the power point for your battery. That way you can extract as much power as possible from each solar panel array. But something that confuses a lot of people is that charge controller manufacturers have a communication system that goes between them and they say that they will not fight. It does not have to do with bulk charging though. This has to do with using flooded cell batteries. And for a system, you want it to equalize those batteries once every 28 days. If you have five controllers and they're all equalizing once every 28 days, that can screw things up a little bit. So it will equalize them too much and they'll gas a lot and you'll have to add more water to those batteries. So what these charge controller manufacturers have done is made a communication device so that they all hit equalize function once every 28 days or you have only one charge controller responsible for equalized function. But this is very easy to work around. If you have your own system at home and you have five charge controllers and they're all charging a flooded battery bank, what you wanna do is have one of your charge controllers with an equalized function or a preset flooded battery charge algorithm option and then have all the other charge controllers on AGM sealed 
function and then you'll be good to go. But if you're using AGM or you're using lithium, this is not a concern. If you have a bank with all AGMs, then put them all on AGM setting. If you have all of your bank with lithium ion, then put them on the appropriate lithium ion. You don't have to really worry about it. But some people still see these advertisements for the communication systems between these solar charge controllers, but it probably does not apply to you. I can't think of anybody wanting to use flooded batteries. I mean, the cost is so high considering their charge cycle life and also columbic efficiency and also trying to keep those things healthy with the solar power system is very, very difficult. Even doing a true equalized function for those with a solar power system is nearly impossible because you only get like five hours of good sunshine in a day. And all you need to know is that if you're not using flooded batteries, you don't have to worry about this. You do not have to spend all the extra money on those charge controllers that have that communication function. So yeah, guys, I hope you understood all of that. I was rambling quite a bit. I think it made sense, but please let me know in the comments section below. If you have any questions or other myths about solar, please let me know because I want to do more example videos like this. I think that they're really fun. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later and please check out my website. If you don't want to think about solar and you just want to buy some components, my website will tell you everything you need to know about what to get. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.